Hi everyone, welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. I have a little uh, project for you today. If you remember my last video where I made this blessings uh, sign, I am going to make a set of little like sconces to go beside it using two of these uh, little plastic cathedral windows from the Dollar Tree. So it'll sit something like this. Turn it this way, you can see it a little better. Okay, but the thing I'm ha problem I'm having is these are white and everything else is black, so it's going to get painted out. I'm also going to be using two of these crates from the Dollar Tree, so that we can put like a little candle below. Okay. So everything will get glued together and it will have to get painted out in black. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. Get this out of the way so it doesn't get messed up. Now I've already gone ahead and taken this one apart just to see. I just popped these off. These are just cardboard. And then I took a razor blade and very carefully scraped at the hot glue that was left there and then drug my razor blade across it to make it smooth. So once this gets painted, hopefully that's not going to show at all. So just use your finger to feel it and that will um, help you know if you've gotten enough scraped off of there or not. But I just use the flat edge of the razor blade and scrape right across. There's like a little, um, there's a screw hole on the back. So everywhere that there was a screw, there's like this little circle you can kind of see in there uh, so you'll want to have to gonna have to cover that up now these do come in black I well I've seen other youtubers using them with them being black but my Dollar Tree didn't have any black so I'm gonna go with the white ones and I'm gonna have to paint it and it's gonna be a pain <laughs> I think I'm gonna actually take it outside and spray paint it black rather than trying to brush all of those inside little nooks and crannies okay so let me show you how I took it apart also, there's some spots on the black backing that are kind of fuzzy and you can either take those off with your razor blade or just hit them with a little bit of um, sandpaper to get those off. Don't throw this away because this is going to become a very important part of our project. So this is just attached with three screws and the third screw up here at the top has a um, little hanger on it. So you're going to want to save that. These screws are very, very tiny and you don't want to lose them. So uh, I have a little bowl over here that I'm keeping all of that in. I love it when the Dollar Tree puts things together with little screws instead of just gluing it together or some kind of little bracket or something with screws just hold things much more nicely together all right so you can kind of see right here where it's kind of rough and um, fuzzy a little bit where it, where it came out of its frame a mold I guess I'm just going to take a little bit of sandpaper and get those off of there it doesn't take a lot you can also just use a razor blade or an X-Acto knife. That will work too. A nail file would work as well. It just takes a little time, but if you take your time and prep your project before you get started, you'll be much happier with it when you're finished. All right. Those are ready to go and I am going to go up and get these painted and be back. Okay, those are down drying in the sunshine right now. But what I need to do is um, I need to glue some bracing inside of this box here so that uh, so that I have something to glue the bottom of the picture frame piece two but um 
having a little bit of an issue because the three won't fit inside. I was thinking of doing on the outside, but then I've got this gap on the back and I don't want to do that. So I want to glue these to the inside and I could just glue two, but I really want it to be solid. So I'm going to take my shears and you can do this with a razor blade, uh, an X-Acto knife, um, you know, whatever you have handy. I'm going to grab a pencil and mark where it needs to be cut and cut it just a tiny bit smaller than that. These are my Gaitrol, Gartol, sorry, Gartol shears. Um, they're like a box knife kind of in shears form and it will cut through that. It takes some takes some gripping power to do that. Uh, it's not an easy, easy thing. If they were a ratcheting plier, it would be much easier. Sometimes it also depends on the wood. Sometimes the blocks will cut right through and then there's other times where I have to cut one side and then go back and cut through from the other side and then sand where the two cuts came together because my hands just aren't super strong. All right, so I've got two cut blocks. Let's make sure they fit perfectly. Perf I say perfectly, but it's with a little bit to spare. Where did my other block go? I don't know where. Oh, it's in there. <laughs> you guys are all probably saying it's right there. Okay, they fit nicely. So what I'm going to do is take some hot glue look at your at your crate and you want the nicest side to be the front so you glue on the opposite side and I'm just using hot glue and you want it just to be flush with the top of the crate so that gives you more of a gluing surface to put the the frame thing on. Okay, I'm going to put my two solid blocks on the ends into the corners. Your frame is going to be, or your window frame, whatever you want to call it, is going to be a tiny bit wider than your box. So you want to make sure that you've got your bracing all the way over to the corners. I'll just give you a better because when I cut it there's some extra space in there just because well it's hard to cut perfectly with a pair of shears and so for that one I'm just going to center center the cut block between okay so you got the inside of the box looking like that and I'm going to do the same. And then I'm going to take these down and spray paint them as well so that they're the same shade of black. I was going to just paint these with my Waverly chalk paint, but then I got to thinking it might not be the same color black. So I want them to match. Make sure you wipe off any extra glue that comes across the top because you want that to be smooth. So now that I have both boxes braced, I can take these down and paint them. So I'll be back. Okay, those are down drying. Now, if you remember my patchwork, so I have these strips that I used in the patchwork part of the, the wall hanger. And I went ahead and pulled out those strips, but I also had saved these little pieces and uh, that's what we're going to start with and we're going to turn this window into stained glass now I don't it's not going to be see-through with the light and whatnot it's just going to be stained glass in color now <clears throat> I think I'm going to go ahead and use my hot glue and this is the frame that was on the back so I'm going to glue my pieces to here 
and then I can use um, a scissors or an X-Acto knife or razor blade to cut away if it goes over. But what I'm going to do is use my pencil and kind of trace it out a little bit first. And I'm not going to be able to uh, use these little pieces on everything, but I'm going to try to move it around so that I get the most color into my spot. Okay, so I've traced that. And this is going to take a little bit of time and you're just going to have to be patient and, and go with it. So I've got my piece traced out. So I'm going to cut actually leaving a little bit around my space. So let me get it cut and I'll show you what I mean. Let's see if you can see this. See my line and where I cut. So that tells me where so that when I put it on here I don't go into the other holes and then I'm going to go ahead and erase my line because if it doesn't line up perfectly I want it to still be able to be beautiful when I put the frame on I don't want to see those tracing lines okay so I've got that and I don't need a ton of glue just a little bit on each side and if you have a fine tipped glue gun this would be good to time to use it um, I have one somewhere but I don't know where it is and my glue just got too cold too fast so I'm just going to put a dot of glue here and a dot of glue here and remember I'm putting the frame back on so that will do my most of my holding and I'm doing it from this side so that the back will look pretty when it's all done except for all these little glue globs okay here's the first one <coughs> I'll be right Sorry about my voice. My allergies are really acting up today. Okay, so I went and grabbed this extra frame that I have. And I was able to get one gray one. So if I put this back over, then the idea is that I'll have pretty paper showing through the frame. But it still looks nice on the back. And in the end, I can cover this whole piece. If it gets too gluey back here, I can cover the whole piece with a piece of black paper. That would be fine too. But if you have an extra one, keep it handy because it just helps you to know where to put things. All right, so I'm going to trace onto this one. And then erase make sure you erase those lines you don't want them to be seen and don't push super hard with your pencil when you make the trace because that makes it harder to erase okay I'm just gonna put a little glue on <coughs> the ends and just make sure you're covering the hole the complete hole Did I cut this one too small? Okay, I cut this one a little smaller than the other one. So, also, um, make sure that when you're gluing these on, if you look at let's see it's really hard to show in this lighting you can kind of see right here there's like some little raised spots where the screws go through make sure that that is what's facing up when you're gluing these on because the recessed where it goes in is the back side okay so I'm going to look immediately and take care of some of these glue dots I think it's going to be just better to cover the back and stop worrying about it all right, so now I've got 
I think I want pink in the middle. And I'm tracing it to be as much color and much as much of the floral print as I can manage in there. It's just like if you were a real stained glass artist, you would have to be cutting and clipping and making your pieces fit. Same with this. And it's just going to take some time. If your pattern is directional with like a straight line in it, that's going to make this much harder to do. So try to keep your pieces, your prints kind of all over patterns. All right, next I want a blue one. glue in the corners not worrying about how much is showing on the back anymore because that it's going to be ugly back there and I'm just going to cover the whole back with black um, cardstock and then before I put it back together I think that will just be the easier way to go okay and let's do a blue one on here Again, I'm not trying to get them to be exactly the same. I want them to be similar, but not exactly the same. So I'm kind of making them a mirror image of each other. I'll get this one piece on, then I will show you, and we'll go from there. If I line this up, then you'll see that I have three pretty windows so far. And I'm going to be doing all of the windows. Okay. And the next pieces I'm going to do are going to be these big ones down here. And I'm going to use the full strips because they're just wide enough. And I think that'll be really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get these on, get everything glued on just exactly the same way as I did these pieces, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done, and I'll keep track of how much time it took me to do the rest of them. To glue all of these pieces onto both frames, it took me about 20 minutes, okay? So that just gives you some kind of idea of how much time you're going to need to finish this project. And now I don't like the way that the back looks. It's all gluey and messy, and that's okay. So I'm going to take a sheet of black cardstock, trace my frame, which I already did, and then I'm going to cut it out just a little bit inside of the line that I traced. Just a little bit, because you don't want it hanging over the edge of your real frame. Okay. Then I'm going to just test it, make sure that it looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and glue it over the screw holes and everything. Um, we're going to poke those through back through in a minute. Okay, so I'm just going to glue kind of spots at a time. And being very careful not to fill that top glue hole or top screw hole with glue. Lift up. And just let it fall down. Okay. Okay, so 
So I think that looks nicer on the back than that. <laughs> so that one's done. This one I cut a little bit bigger and I will trim after. I'm only gluing the edges. I'm not worrying about gluing down the center. This one didn't get on completely straight, so I'm just going to take my scissors, kind of hold them at an angle to the frame, and just trim that paper. So I just don't want to see any of it hanging over. I think that's actually the better way to do it, is to cut it a little bit big and then trim it, because then you just get a nicer it covers up all your glue a little bit better all right next I'm going to grab something pokey and I'm going to come into the front and just poke through where the screws are supposed to go it's just three of them then go to the back and move your poking thing around I think I got this at the Dollar Tree. It's got a stylus on one end and a poker on the other. And that way I have three holes poked. There's one, two, it's hard to see, and three. That way the screws can go ahead and go in where they're supposed to. I'm going to go put these aside and go upstairs and see if those pieces I painted are ready to go. All right, everything has dried and we're ready to put the backs onto the frames so that we can start assembling this and getting our finished pro product. So I'm going to take one of my screws and I'm going to put it through the middle piece and line it up on there go ahead and screw that down now I'm going to check from the front I don't know what that was okay and make sure that all of my pieces are lined up the way I want them and I can see that I forgot erase my lines on these little pieces up here because I can see them through the frame so double check make sure you got all of your pencil lines erased before you move on like I'm doing okay there we go everything's back in where it's supposed to be and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and leave the little hanger on that came with it if you have a magnetic screwdriver awesome time to get it out right now these little screws are very tiny okay so I'm just kind of pulling it up a little bit so I can see where that screw needs to go. I think I lined up. It's really hard to line them up sometimes. And then the last screw. Alright, so that's going to suck that down in the back just a little bit and that's fine. Now I've got this beautiful stained glass looking window. I'm going to do the other one.
my two frames are back together looking beautiful and I made them so that they mirror each other as far as which paper is in which hole all right now I'm going to bring over one of the black boxes remember we put those I can't really see it because put the braces in there I just kind of misted the top of it um, just so that it would if you look down inside you wouldn't be able to see it so much so now I'm going to center my I'm going to center the window onto the box and I'm just going to glue it with hot glue and I'm going to be pretty generous with it and I probably should have put some E6000 on that too I'm just kind of eyeballing the center set it up make sure it's smooth along the back and then I'm going to take some E6000 and just kind of run it in the crack there And I'm going to use my finger to kind of smear it down inside so that it fills in the crack. Okay. Now, if you want to, you could put a popsicle stick along here, which might not be a bad idea. The only thing is this one won't be black it won't be painted and we are going to have to clip clip the ends off so that it doesn't show and i'm going to put some e6000 on this as well as some hot glue and that will help to reinforce that bond right there okay So there's that box glued together. All right, let's do the other side. I'm going to remember to put E6000 in it this time. The hot glue peeled where it was painted. This is why I don't usually paint first. I usually um, assemble first, but this was one of those times. And this one's just not wanting to work out. Okay, so I'm going to trim. This time, I'm only going to put E6000 in the middle on this one. So I can put a fair amount of hot glue on each end so that the immediate bond will be a little stronger. Because I think this one's going to need it. I'm going to hold it in place for a few minutes. Hopefully that's going to hold. I'm going to go ahead. Once the ease or once the hot glue is dry, you don't have to worry about 
it mixing with the E6000. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little E6000 on there to fill the gaps. And hopefully that's going to hold together nicely. Okay, so now I have two boxes like that. Okay, now we have to decide what we want to put inside. I will be right back. Okay, so I've got some packages of these fabric roses. I think they were Valentine's Day from the Dollar Tree. And they come together in groups of two. But if you untwist the wires, then you'll have individual ones. So you can stick them in wherever you want to rather than them being paired together. All right. So I thought that those would be fun. And then I have these felt flowers. These, I think, came from Michael's in one of their grab bag clearance boxes from a while back. So I didn't have any fake, uh, like, silk red roses. That would have been perfect. But I didn't have any. All right. Now... I'm going to cut this in half. Where'd my razor blade go? I just leave my floral foam in the plastic wrap sometimes. And Stick it in there. It helps keep it from being quite so messy. All right, then we're going to put a little hot glue on it just to hold it in place in there. Forgot to grab some greenery. I'll be right back. Okay, I have this old boxwood wreath. It's been used and dropped so many times that it um, it's kind of misshapen. So I've just been kind of pulling bits and pieces out of it. To do my decor pieces with. So what I'm going to do is, that's actually too big for up front, I'm just going to clip off each individual branch and tuck it in in an attempt to hide the floral foam. <laughs> I'm not gluing it, I'm just tucking it in. I'm just going to kind of fill in. This is plastic boxwood. Um, plastic seems to be what's trending right now. Uh, I would prefer a silk one. I think it looks dressier that way, but I couldn't find any. So I just decided to use what I had on hand. Now you could also put um, like an LED candle holder in here, which I thought of after I'd already been to the dollar store. So I don't have any on hand at the moment. All right, so I've got kind of a base of my greenery here. And I'm going to use these little stubs that I cut off of the, off of the greenery to glue on to these roses that don't have anything on them. I'm just going to get these set up first because it's going to take a minute for that to dry. I just need something on it to help it be able to be poked in. Poke a few of these burlap roses in.
ready yet. So while those are drying a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and start poking in the greenery into this other one. Let's bring this one back over and put in a couple of these red roses. And then, whoop, let's put the other two in over here. Sorry, I'm not keeping this. In your sight. Pink rose. I want them to be similar. I don't want them to be identical, but I do want them to be similar. And then, looks like another red rose back here just to fill it in. This side, and so that goes in right here. So let's swap that. Whoops. that's gonna look lovely. With this blessings in between it. Look how pretty that looks together. All right, there you have it, my faux stained glass cathedral windows. This is a Dollar Tree DIY, except for the red felt roses right here. Those came from Michael's. I think everything else came from Dollar Tree. Let me know what you're thinking about this project in the comment section below. This is not a quick, fast project. It takes time to cut those little pieces of paper to fit into that window frame, and you have to paint everything out. But uh, I think it was worth the time, and I think it's going to look really pretty on the wall with that Blessings patchwork that I did in the last video hanging in between it. So let me know, is this something you would do or would you just leave the cathedral window open so the wall shows through or would you just put one piece of paper on the back so that you have one pattern across all the window openings? Let me know what you're thinking. If you like this project, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel to grow and um, lets me also know what kinds of things you want to see on my channel in the future. All right, this has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.